so far who work different seasonal and temporary jobs as they're going. So they'll travel for a few months and then when they get tired of traveling they'll stop somewhere and work and save up money so they can leave traveling again. This can be really sweet if you have a skill or a special hobby that you really enjoy. For example a couple of guys we met are ski instructors during the winter and they save up their money and then in the summer they go off and do a van life or other people, they're rock climbing instructors or surfing instructors and they just save up their money for a while and then they can go and do van life and not have to worry about staying connected to the internet, which gives you a lot more flexibility when you're traveling. This is a great option if you're the kind of person who likes to work hard and play hard because you can work hard and save money for a couple months and then play hard and travel all over the place and not have to worry about money. There's definitely a few things you have to sacrifice when getting this life. Everything's about priorities. And if you're okay with pooping outside, then you get to wake up with views like this. The only person stopping you from living this lifestyle is you. If you don't have a family or an insane career yet, then you really have all the freedom in the world. A lot of people get their vans done in one to three months. It took me about nine months because I was a beginner, but I'd say it turned out well. There's a lot that goes into van life, but at the end of the day, when you're waking up at spots like this and cooking meals with a view like that, it's everything, like, it's worth every little bit of the effort to get here. And so my message to you is to work for it. Nobody's going to create your dream life for you at the end of the day. Um, you're really all you have. And um, it does take a little bit of money to get started with this lifestyle. Once you get the ball rolling, though, it's like the cheapest way you could possibly live. Besides living at home with your parents, not paying the bills. If you're interested in travel, van life is such a great way to go about it. It's such a sustainable way to see the world and have a living space at the same time. Get vehicle insurance. Um, ideally, you'll have insurance that covers your vehicle, your build, and your belongings if possible. So I had kind of an interesting journey with this. Um, initially, I had an SUV and I just maintained my renter's insurance that would cover my belongings inside of my SUV. And then as a business owner, I also have to have separate business insurance for my camera gear. So those things were covered separately. And then the vehicle itself was just covered under normal insurance. When I got the, the van, that was a little bit trickier. For the first year, actually, up until recently, I was paying for insurance that I found out wasn't even valid because I paid like over $2,000 and apparently it would have been invalid because I had a build and that basically nullified the agreement. So what I ended up having to do was getting my vehicle inspected and approved as an RV and then registering it as an RV and then obtaining RV insurance. So my vehicle is registered as an RV. It's fully insured, both the vehicle and the build. And then I also have business insurance for all of my camera gear and uh, personal belongings insurance. So that can get a little tricky and it's honestly way easier to work out when you still have a permanent address. So I would recommend doing that ahead of time if possible.